Hey everybody, this is the Gal Studio Mechanical Cashew in stainless steel, and we're going to take a real close look at it. This is relatively new, it just arrived today. I've had a couple hours to play with it, I've tuned it to my liking, and I'd like to show you how to do the same. So stick around. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this like the other videos, at least the way I've been trying to do the videos. Um, sort of get the details out of the way ahead of time in case that's what you're here for. And then at the end, uh, or maybe towards the middle, um, I'll take this thing apart and we'll get into the details of it. Uh, I did need to be tuned. Uh, it came with glass balls, I believe, which I'll show them to you here in a few minutes. But uh, I don't think I've encountered glass balls before, and I didn't like them. And I didn't like the ceramic balls in there for that matter. Um, but you'll see when we take it apart. Um, it uses either spring and ball combination or ball plungers, which I'm a big fan of ball plungers. But um, I will say, I, I mean, I've said lots of times that I wish people would just design around ball plungers. But here's, here's a case where I, I changed my mind because this has the option of using ball plungers. And like I said, you can either do that or you can use the uh, springs and balls. And in this case, the springs and balls are what did it for me. I took this apart and put it back together at least eight times, probably 10 times, and uh, tried different combinations, springs, balls, balls, plungers, two ball plungers, um, different material balls, that's about the only things that I could change, and I came up with something that I'm really happy with. So um, we'll talk about those details later, but so you can see it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. It was very difficult to learn how to hold, um, you know, and I even have experience with this thing. Uh, I bought this a while back. I was underwhelmed by it, but then most of us are in agreement that it's probably a good fidget if you're like at a meeting or under your desk. You want to make no noise or little noise. There's just not much haptic feedback to it. But it wasn't very expensive, so um, I'd usually avoid stuff like that. But I saw this coming, and uh, I was looking forward to it, and I'm, I'm really happy with it now. And I, again, I'll tell you, for the first hour, I wasn't sure if I was going to be happy with it or not. Um, like I said, just just learning how to hold it. I'm, I'm even almost not sure right now. There we go. That seems familiar again. Yeah. Um, it takes a while to get used to this and figure out how to hold it. So there's a bit of a learning curve to it, I think, when we're used to sliders that just go linear uh, and not a curve like this. And the thing is, you need to be able to, um, I've said it before with, with the linear sliders, uh, I like to grasp them on the sides a little bit. That slows them down when you're coming in on the backstroke like this. Otherwise, this thing just goes back and forth, you know. If that's what you're after, that's fine. That's fine. But I like to slow it down and feel those individual clicks. There's six in each direction. And to do that, you know, to be able to feel those clicks, you have to squeeze it a little bit to slow down the travel of this thing when you're pushing it back. And that, I guess, is what, what took me a while to get used to. That and figuring out what the best combination of balls and springs were for me. Um, so, yeah, let me think about this for a second. I'm going to be doing a comparison at the, uh, at the end of the introduction part of this video here um, with a bunch of different stuff here I have with me. But uh, just to demonstrate what I'm talking about, I think uh, one that would be clearly good at demonstrating that would be this mechanical from uh, 0180C. Uh, if you try to push this down without squeezing it a little bit from the sides, you're not going to get every individual click. It just it just won't work for you. So it's, it, just a little bit of a squeeze, a little bit of control. That's how these haptics, these mechanical haptics, seem to perform best. 
so I consider this to be the bottom and that's the part where the uh, I don't know if that's black Teflon or if it's just black plastic but uh, so far it's not binding up or causing any issues um, I am pleased that it at least has uh, I think these are torques they kind of look like Allen head screws but uh, let me make sure it's focused uh, the picture showed uh, Phillips head screws which are always kind of like a red flag for me but you know take whatever we can get I guess um, I'm gonna have happy about that and uh, did I say it came with glass balls I believe I did uh, and that's the other downfall of this is it didn't have any spare parts whatsoever and it really should there's a couple screws here that could go missing there's um, two springs and four balls and that's it uh, they, they didn't give you out oh, they also gave you the option of uh, two ball plungers so you're either using you're either using the springs and balls or the ball plunger by itself or two ball plungers you could use three ball plungers in this I, I could do that but I didn't try it and they didn't give me three anyhow but um, yeah let's take it from there so this is uh, very familiar in design to the one pal it's got the same same sort of setup uh, and I, I really like that um, what I like best I suppose and the reason I brought this one out specifically because these are similar you know the ones I have that I'm going to show you that, that are mechanicals they're all kind of similar they have this sort of tongue and groove uh, design uh, part in the middle that holds them together um, but what's similar about these two designs is that you can use either a ball plunger or a ball and, sp and spring. Or, or in this case, you can use two balls and springs or two or three ball plungers. So I really like the fact that you can use either or. I used to say, you know, I was pushing for, for ball plungers because I just like the fact that they're all there. They're the little packaged little spring and a ball thing. It's much less easy to lose one of those than it is a ball. But um, after having a couple mechanicals now, especially ones that you can tune in, um, it made a lot of sense for it to be able to use both options. Um, well, this one, I wanted it. I really, I wanted to use those ball plungers in this. And I tried one, and then I tried two, and I even tried ball plungers from a um, from a different product where I actually had. Uh, um, a ball plunger that was because the ones that come with this the ball plungers I'll show you then but they're stainless steel balls you can get ball plungers with other balls built into them and I had one I have one extra one that was um, the black zirconium nitride ball uh, a ceramic so a ceramic compared to a stainless and it was just too rough it was too rough it's just like the glass balls the glass the glass balls that came with this I'm pretty sure they're glass I'll show you in a minute um, there's there's four balls um, two of them are used as a friction surface that's what runs in these grooves here you see um, they're actually set in place on this piece and they run that track and that where they stop there is what prevents this from coming off the whole way but like I said it came with uh, glass beads and glass not glass beads glass balls and um, they were really scratchy at least I think they were when we take this apart we'll do that quick and maybe without a full assembly we'll put it together and rub it together and see if we can hear how the difference is but uh, yeah uh, when you have to tune this you really need to have some extra balls to play around with. Um, so they're four millimeter balls. You'll need some of those, I think. And I ended up using nylon balls as my um, friction balls. And then um, uh, I ended up using stainless. Stainless steel it kind of surprised me, but it worked with this. Um, two stainless steel four millimeter balls and springs. So, but to do, to figure that out, I had to try stainless steel nylon black zirconium nitride and the white ceramic um whatever the hell it's good zirconium <laughs> who cares anyhow um i had all those to try but this only came with glass so keep that in mind um 
we'll go ahead and do, I think I, I think I said pretty much everything I could say about it. Um, I'll just do the comparisons and weigh it next and everything, measure it, and uh, after that we'll take it apart. Okay, comparisons. Let's start out with everybody's favorite, the Mackie CP3. It is similar in height and thickness. Not really a fair comparison there, is it? Um, here is the original, I guess, original um, polycarbonate magnetic cast shoe nut. It is a bit fatter and rounder. And I know the travel's much less as well. So if we start these both out at about the same place. Whoops. Well, it keeps wanting to pop back. See, they don't go. This one does not travel nearly as far. So that's that one. Uh, the one pal we already had out, that's about the same thickness. This will fit in your pocket nice. And then we had, uh, I don't know if we got this yet out. The zero one mechanical. The mechanical is a bit thicker. And I thought this would be a good comparison to another Gal Studio product, the um, Mini SP or the SP Mini. This is a hybrid, uh, half magnetic, half mechanical. As in, there's a there's a, a ball plunger in here that runs along these divots. So that's sort of a similar thing. Um, holding it, squeezing it, because otherwise it wants to almost pop all the way back. Uh, and this is something, this is something we're all used to anyhow. I mean, most magnetic sliders, you can push them together slowly like that. I think most of us hold them in our hand anyhow to sort of get that cup sound. It just sort of, you, you'll just sort of naturally end up doing that. So holding a mechanical and sort of stabilizing a mechanical isn't that much different than, uh, see, I'm still f fiddling over which way to hold it. No. Yeah, this is what I like. This is what I like because it feels like these fingers do a good job of acting as a break on this back surface. I can sort of regulate that fairly well. But, uh, yep, that's it. I think that's all the comparisons. Let's do some measuring here. This is, try to get it as even as possible, 48 millimeters. Um, so if it was sitting on your desk, it would stand about 25, 26 millimeters high. Uh, this, 20 millimeters. And the thickness is 12. And to weigh it, I have to worry about magnets in this one. 64.3 grams. This is stainless steel. I should have mentioned also, it's, uh, it is, uh, and I'll, I'll probably put this in a little thing across the top at, at the very beginning of the video, but if you want to find this on AliExpress at least, all you have to do is search for G-A-O and then Cashew, and it'll pop up. Uh, two or three different stores at least have it, so shop around there and then, you know, take your chances. I'm not going to say exactly where I got it, but it, I've seen it available in, um, this is, they're calling this stonewashed stainless, and um, they have polished, and then they have polished zirconium, and then they have a picture of what they say is titanium, but it's the exact same picture and it looks exactly like this uh, stone washed. So it's probably similar. I would imagine being titanium, it might be a little bit darker in color, but they used the same photo there. So that is a problem. I think that is it uh, from this point forward. We're going to take it apart and I'll give you some tips on how to tune it. And uh, this is where all the fun stuff happens. So I'm really happy with this thing, and I wanted to show you a picture of something that they came out with a long time ago. Well, not a long time ago, but it was one of their earlier pieces. Um, I think I think Gal Studio might be the, not if not the only, then one of the few 
designers that does stuff uh, on a curve like this. So it was called, I think it was called the game pad. Let me show you a picture of it right now. So I think that was probably a lot like their mini SPA, or it was just the SPA, and they might not be called the mini. Um, and this was something else at the time, but you know, it's four balls, four tracks, and then the balls are stuck there. But uh, I think it was the same idea, just on a curve, and it had two little buttons on it. The buttons were different. Um, it looked like a little game pad. Uh, I kind of wish I'd have gotten one of those, just if nothing else, just as a reference to, to see what it was like and just to experience it and compare it. But they did that, and then they also did this. And like I said, I, don't, I can't think off the top of my head of other designers that have done stuff on a curve. Let's say specifically uh, ball track sliders that are on a curve. Um, but they have some experience with it, and they seem to know what they're doing. Like I said, that's that was pretty good. Um, they got this one figured out pretty good, too. So that's it for uh, the history lesson, I guess. Let's take her to part. Okay, you're going to need a T6. It came with an Allen, an Allen, an Allen head, uh, an Allen wrench. And it's difficult for me to see, but it works. What did I just say? T6 fits in there nicely. So we'll do that. Uh, all you need to do, this one's not going to fly apart on you, so you really don't have to worry about anything. Take that screw out and slide it to the other side. You do want to keep a grip on it, holding it together like this. Okay, you got the two screws out of the way. And now we can just, whatever position it's in, just, just lift it right off. And do mind that things are going to come out, but they're not going to come flying out. Let's just dump everything out of here. I'll show you the internal construction. Let me make sure I have this in focus for you. So this little gap in here is just a space for it to grab a hold of this and keep it held when it's screwed down. So without the balls in there, you see it wants to go all the way. Then you have your, I don't know if this is Teflon or not. It feels fairly rigid. I would almost say based on its rigidity that it's not Teflon. But uh, so far, I've, I've used it quite a bit in the last several hours and I'm not seeing any troubles at all. Not at all. But, uh, like I said, it came with glass balls, and we'll get that stuff out in a minute. But I'll just show you how this was put together. I'll get that out of the way. We don't need that. Um, if, if, if it, when it comes, it's, it comes with, at least mine came with the spring and the balls put in it. So, say you've taken it apart and you want to put it back together again. Well, the first thing's pretty obvious. That, that slides in there. There's only one way that that can happen. So, you can put that together. Then you take your balls and you're gonna drop one in here and one in here. It's it's an unfortunate thing. I've already brought up the fact, I'm gonna put one over here, that they did not give you any extra parts because if I had one more spring, I could have tried three balls in this, which, which I still, I will down the road someday, but I wanna find springs that are the same. And oh, they only gave you two, that's it. Um, I'll get off of that now. But uh, you drop the two down in there. Now these two little divots here, are your uh, are your friction plates? You know what I did? Um, I told you the wrong thing. You could put the nylon balls in there, but the nylon balls this is these are the balls that are going to run against the divots. And um, when I tried the nylon balls, it was very soft. So if you're looking for a soft response, that's what that's where they should go. We want to put the stainless steel balls down in there. Okay, drop them down in. Then you put the spring on top. And it doesn't matter which way the springs go in. They're not, they're not conical, they're cylindrical. Then, um, let's see. Where did the steel balls, the steel balls are in there. Um, now you take the, I, I took nylon balls again. This came with glass balls, I'll show you in a second. Um, I don't like them. I put nylon balls out here. Those are the friction balls. 
and then stainless steel balls down in here and those are the um, divot balls we'll call them so once everything is in place you can uh, put this back on top I had to think about it for a second I've done this a few times but I'd rather go slow and not mess anything up and then you can just move it out of the way enough to put your little screws back in there So you know what, I won't bother putting that back in. We're going to take it apart again anyhow, but you get the idea. That's how easy it is. And you can change those balls out any way you like. You're going to have to have the balls, they're four millimeter, but um, the, stamp, the, the glass balls that it comes with, to me, they were just much, much too scratchy. So let's go ahead let me get my act together here <clears throat> and we will move to the next little segment so here's what it comes with and here's what it comes in and you get no stickers or anything just a little card and this is also not what you get this, this is this is a combination of things I've I went and found in my collection today and what you get. I'll separate it all out here in a second. Just dump all this stuff out here. So, get my trusty tweezers out. So we have glass ball number one, two, three, and four. Spring number one, spring number two, oops, magnetized. And then screw number one and screw number two. Then you also get two ball plungers. The rest of this stuff is my stuff. And should be out of the frame. As much as I can get it out of the frame. So this is what you get. No extra pieces. And like I said, glass balls. I have not ever seen. Let me put a few. Let me put a few in my hand and get them close to the mirror to the uh, lens for you here try to focus it in hopefully you'll get an idea they um, they look transparent and I went out I have a, a glass plate on my coffee table that's about a quarter of an inch thick and uh, it's a good surface to like bounce something like this off of to see to hear how it sounds and see how high it bounces and I'm pretty sure that they're not plastic. Um, I'm pretty sure these are my first glass balls, and I don't like them. I really don't like them. Sometimes the white uh, white zirconium oxide balls can be scratchy. Sometimes they're perfect. Sometimes the black silicone nitride balls, these are both ceramic, they can be perfect. Sometimes not. Um, nylon. Nylon balls can be very, very soft. They can make something that's loud a little bit quieter. And uh, stainless steel, I usually wouldn't want to go there. But for some reason, whatever, stainless steel balls work well with how they have these divots machined on there. At least for me. Everybody's tastes um, could be different. But uh, what we'll do next is we'll install, I'll show you here, um, we're going to install one of these ball plungers, but I'll show you that you can put two in there if you want to. I got myself a little rearranged here, but uh, basically if you want to put two in, you can slide this out. You don't have to slide it out the whole way. I'll show you maybe up close. I'll take it out better. Better show you. You can see once I focus that there's three holes in the middle and they have a little bit of a countersink in them. And that's meant to accept these ball plungers. So you can put either two in or three in, but they don't give you three, or you could put one in the middle. And what I think works best for me is one in the middle. Two makes it surprisingly more difficult. Three would really, I think, 
make it really difficult. I, I have, this is sort of a standard size, and I think it's the same one that fits in the CP2, the CP5, and the One Pal. I think it would fit in all three of those. I didn't check, but I'm pretty sure it's the same size. Let's put this one in the middle, and we can go ahead and slide that back into here. Don't force anything. You can push that little ball down if you want to give it a little help getting through, and then it's in the divots, and then you're good to go there. Now, we need to put the two friction balls back in here. Now, this is something I would say you're probably best just going with nylon. It seems like the most logical decision. Everything else is going to be scratchy a little bit, I think. Um, so that's not something I would really f try to fine tune. I, I didn't really try anything else, to tell you the truth. It came with glass balls, and I went straight to nylon. <clears throat> what to experiment with are either using a different combination of these ball plungers or the balls and springs. And of course, again, for that, you have to have your own balls because this only comes with four glass balls. So once we're at this point, we need to put the friction balls back in their little pocket here. Okay. Now we can just take this. We're not using this as the other ball plunger. We'll put that away. We're not using it. We can just take the, this part, put it down on top of it, flip it back over. Gently slide this out of the way until you have access to the screw, the screw hole. So let's see. You know what? I could go back to that now, maybe. That is that is uh, similar to me, to the way I had it set up with the springs and balls, except it's a little less, um, when you're using the springs and balls, of course, there's two balls. And, and two springs. In this case, if you, if the plunger is only one ball and one spring. So there's that difference. It's a shame I don't have two of these. I could set them both up in different ways and we could really tell what the differences were. And I'm not in the mood to try to video edit that sort of thing on my phone. But uh, I like that now. I might just keep it that way. But still, it is great to be able to, to to, to experiment. So again, I think I'm not going to push for, I don't think everything should be made with ball plungers. What I think is everything should be made with the option, just like this is, just like the one pal is, of, of being able to either use springs and balls or ball plungers. And you can get those ball plungers in different um, materials. The ball can be different materials, same materials we talked about there with the, uh, with the balls. So I think I think that is about it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye.